Now, please help me welcome to the stage the VP of Data and Insights for Warner Media Latin America, Marcela Doria. Hi, guys. I need my water because I apologize in advance if I start coughing. I, I, I did invite my, my sickness to the party, but what can I do, no? So I'm going to leave my water here. So it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Data and Insights for Warner Media now. Here it was Turner, but now we, we are Warner Media for Latin America. I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of my strategy and how do we, I support Warner Media, uh, understanding the consumers and our partners, helping also them. Okay. So this is the reality of my industry. Our clients are the clients of our clients. Which means that our consumers, which are the viewers, in the end of the day, they are the clients of our clients, which are the brands. So I do have two major pillars and focus when I do my day-by-day -day work, which is looking at understanding the consumer and understanding and helping the brands understand their consumer as well. So let's start with the consumers. There is this statement that I like a lot, which says that technology is everything that comes after you're born. Beside me, Damien, and Yuval, who else were born before remote control? <laughs> a few, so we're not that, uh, not just us. So, guys, remote control was amazing. You know, because when I, when I was a kid, I was watching TV with my parents, and I was always the one that had to turn on the, the, the bottom of the TV. Marcella, go stand up to turn on the, we want to change the channel. So I had to go there and change the channel. Uh, by the way, we just had like three or four channels at that time. So remote control at that time was a big technology for us. So if you look in the past, many things for me, as I'm 45 years old, the technology, like cell phone technology, internet guys. I, when I was born, I, I, saw I saw internet when I was in college already. So, and then when I was watching Jetson, who knows Jetson, the, the cartoon? Yeah, Jetson, they had the VC, you know, they, they could vi have a, a video call. And it was amazing. I said, look, I think I would never see this in my life. And today, my kids, they talk to me with like a video conference. We have a, like a WhatsApp video call all the time. So for my kids, cell phone, social networks, internet, VC, it's not, it's not technology because they were born and this exists already. So, and why I'm saying that? Because the way that we relate with technology changes a lot from generation to generation. And this, believe it or not, impact a lot my business. So today is very common to say that for the marketeers, no better than me, there is a, a new fancy thing that we call the generational marketing. The generational market tries to understand how each generation relates to content and also they get impact or eff eff affected by marketing or ads. So the centennials are the ones that they were born in the 21st century, so they never saw life without the internet and social media. They are all the time busy, connected. They say, they describe themselves as very anxious. They are the ones that they shift PC to mobile and text voice. They do not text, they voice and they do video and they do not use uh, a PC anymore. They just, everything is mobile. The famous millennials, no, the generation Y. Generation Y, they are the first one to have a cable, but the first one to watch in-stream video. They are the trendsetters. They are the ones who love to hug trees. <laughs> they, uh, they are very conscious about the environment. They eat super healthy. They are worried about the others, so they want a better place for everyone to live. But they are the ones that are the most difficult, the most challenged uh, uh, audience for marketeers because they are very irresponsive to traditional media. So they are a big challenge. And then comes the Generation X, the post baby boomers, which is myself. Uh, they, these guys, they were born between 69 and 65 and 79. 
So the thing about the X is very interesting because they are the first generation that comes after the, a lot of parents, divorced parents. They were the kids from the mothers who decided to live their lives instead of have, being in, a, in a, like a family or being a mother because the society want them to be, get married or be married. So they decided to live their own lives. So they were raised by, by nannies and by grandparents. And because of that, they say that they have, they have, they very, um, they don't have a lot of a, a affection. Sorry about my English. So they lack of affection. So everything that they they pursue and everything they got in life there means a lot to them because they work very hard. And today they are the ones working very hard, making a lot of money. And everything that they they buy uh, is like something that they achieve in life. So, but then they ask, what does it to do with your business, with media? So, a lot, because the way that they uh, relate with content changes from generation to generation. So, if you look at the Generation Z, for example, they're going to watch content everywhere. They don't care if the content is a big screen, small screen, on TV, tablets. They just go after the content. If you look at the millennials, they are the ones that they are going to pay for content if the content is relevant and makes sense to them. And what happened with the Generation X? They are the current pay TV consumers, like me. Why? Because I, I want to have 200 channels in my, ho my house. I, I watch maybe five, but it's like I bought it. I can't buy. This is something that I achieve in my life. I have the power and the money to have a lot of channels. I would never give up. So this, they are the current consumers, yeah, exactly. We are very happy with these guys, by the way. But what's my job? My job is to tell the business and my company, say, guys, we need to understand these ones. Do you know why? Because the Generation X, they are going to die <laughs> soon. They are getting old. No, you, know, you cannot rely on business in the Generation X because the millennials and the Generation Z, they don't care about pay, pay TV anymore. So... This is part of my job to try to understand these guys and help my company to get in touch with Generation Z and millennials. So who are they? No, this is the first question. So this is all, these, these are all the industries that are in jeopardy when you look at the Generation Z and X. These are products that they don't want to buy anymore. They don't want to get rich, so they don't buy stocks, they don't buy lo ticket, uh, lottery tickets, they don't want to have a car because this, why? Why am I going to have a car if I can't have Uber? They don't want to have a house. They don't want to get married. So they're not buying more diamonds. It's very interesting. The diamonds industry is getting like in bad times because they don't want to buy diamonds. Doesn't make sense for them. They want to get married. They don't want to, have a, to, to go on a trip with the, their fiance and then they, maybe they're going to rent a house uh, and they're not going to buy a car. So... They are very healthy. They don't want to eat fast food. They, they don't believe that they need to buy a lot of food. So Costco is a good example. It's a, it's a company that you can, a retail company that can buy a lot of food at the same time. I don't know if they, you guys have here in Europe. And I, I will, I will, I will, I'm sure nobody knows why cereal. Everybody, I guess, why they're not buying cereal anymore? No? You, you have a guess? Okay, I tell you guys. No, it's not sugar. Yes, the thing is about cereal is because they, they are conscious about the environment. And this, if, they buy, if they eat cereal like that, it's, they have to clean the bowl. So they're going to waste water. So they just prefer the, the cereal in bars. So this is the, this is the way that this guy thinks. If you, if you don't catch up with it, we're going to lose uh, in our industry. Maybe my industry, but also in everybody else's industries. So they, they say something that people buy things because of what they can do with them, because of what they can tell others about it, and because of what heaven it says about them. Pardon my French, but they think it's bullshit. Say, so, you know something? I don't believe on that. I don't need to have things to, to people look at me. These are the brands that they related to. Why? Because these brands can talk to them. No? So they, they prefer to, to borrow music instead of buying music. They have Rappi, no? 
we just mentioned before, iFood and Netflix, these are the brands that are really uh, have a purpose for them. So what do we learn with them is if a brand wants to touch their hearts, wants to be like part of their day by day uh, uh, like lives, they need to have a purpose. And here I have a, a good example of it. Tom's didn't start with the idea for a shoe. In fact, it was the absence of a shoe that started it all. Argentina was beautiful. The music, the colors, the food, the people. But as soon as I left the city, I noticed this need. I knew nothing about shoes and very little about giving. But I had a simple idea. What if a for-profit shoe company used giving as its business model? One where for every pair of shoes sold, a new pair would be given to a child in need. One for one. They'd be shoes for a better tomorrow. Tomorrow's shoes. So I called them Toms. I remember boxing some of the first Toms at Blake's apartment. We sold 10,000 pairs that first summer, so we gave away 10,000 pairs. 10,000 pairs that protected children from disease and infection, that completed the school uniform, helping increase enrollment. We gave repeatedly, going back time and time again to the same communities, watching the kids grow up with Toms on their feet. 10,000 became one million, two million. A spontaneous response to a simple need had evolved into something much bigger than we had expected. We were learning to give by giving, and we were getting some of it wrong. The criticism made us take a closer look at what we were doing, and this led us to a realization. One for One wasn't a corporate policy, it was a movement. We weren't a shoe company at all, we were a giving company, and this changed everything. So, this is purpose. If the brand shows the purpose for a millennial and Generation Z, they're gonna succeed. The brand they, they is, was not about the shoe, it was about like the movement, it was about helping people. So, okay, this is part of my job is like understand the consumer and I do this all the time because I need to show the company that I work that we need to go after this millennials and Generation Z and the content that we've been talking about content the entire morning, the content needs to relate with these guys. So how to help our clients to be relevant with their clients? Mike brought this before, and it was funny because we didn't talk about it, but we, he, he brought this before. Attention is gold. And for you marketeers, you know better than me that like many years ago, the important thing was to reach people. If I reach more and more and more people, it's enough. Because if I reach them, they're gonna be impacted by my ad, and this is what I need. We, we cannot just guarantee that you're gonna have success just reaching people because there are many ways of getting uh, the ad or getting contact with the consumers. So I think more than reaching people, we need to get their attention. So attention is gold. Just to give some stats, in an average day, a person unlock their cell phones 150 times a day. I do that uh, around 170 times a day. I, I check my cell phone quite often. So, and I think like, because I'm in the industry, I'm always connected, I used to work for Twitter, like eight months ago, I was still on Twitter. I use my cell phone a lot. But just average people, they unlock 150 times a day. As I, I was mentioned, attention, they made a study in Ireland when they compared the human attention with uh, better fish. And guess what? The better fish has higher uh, <laughs> attention than us. Uh, we can keep, a, keep attention for eight seconds, the better fish can keep attention for nine seconds. This was proved by this study. So when I was in the industry, as remember, I'm, uh, I'm Generation X, I'm 45 years old. When I was in the industry, I started at 21 years old. Everybody was saying, look, uh, okay, they are in the cell phones, but I'm, they are, I'm in the second screen, no problem. If they are watching TV and they are the second screen here, so guys, there is no second screen anymore. Everything is first screen. Because first screen is the screen that is kept the, the consumer's attention. We need to, to believe on that. And the other thing that I've been talking a lot is big data. So we at Warner, we also look a lot big data, of course, with all the compliance of GDPR, uh, very careful with our consumers, but big, big data is a big thing. Why? Because we need to understand our, indus uh, our consumers to do a better content to them. So everybody's after big data, 
and, and big data can predict the future is very powerful for us. The, there was this case uh, in the US as a credit card company. They just started studying a person and they figured out that the guy was going to divorce before he knows that he was going to divorce. So just because he changed his behavior, he started buying shoes, uh, he started going out, you no, know, he was getting home late. So, and the current car company knew that he was going to divorce, but he didn't know that. He just figured out later on. So why? Because you can read uh, and you can understand behavior through data. So I work in a media company, you know, uh, we do believe that content is the bridge between the clients, which are the brands, and our consumers. But one important thing is content is not proprietary of FTV anymore, because the content is everywhere. So social plays a critical role in content. We know that. There's this, this statement that I like a lot to say, a true power of the social media is influence. Social provides an av avenue for companies to do not only engage with cons customers, but also influence them with the right content that helps them make decisions. Many companies are not leverage the power of social media at the best of their capabilities. We do. We as a media company, World Media, we do believe that social can help us a lot. We don't see YouTube, we don't see Facebook, you don't see Instagram as a threat, no, we see them as a partners. And a good example of it is Oscars. So I'm gonna bring a case of Oscars in Brazil. Just to give some additional stats, uh, in Twitter, 47% of audience says already tuned into a program after seeing someone tweeting about it. 97% of the content tweets related to content are originated on TV. So comes the big question, who comes first, the egg or the chicken? So it's tough because everything that they're talking about content on Twitter, uh, sometimes people talk about it, like Game of Thrones is a good example. People, of course, they start on TV and people start talking a lot on, on, the, on the social networks. But also some people had a group of talking about the Game of Thrones. So I, we do believe there is uh, two ways, no? But when you're talking about Oscars, we can guarantee that the conversation about Oscars happens because there, there is a content uh, happening and on TV, that being transmitted on TV. Just to give us some other stats about Brazil, Brazilians are very, very heavy internet users. They, um, this is something interesting because there are 23% of pay TV penetration, but 50% of broadband penetration in the country. There are few countries in the world where broadband is higher than pay TV, and Brazil is one of them. So this tells a lot the power of the internet on, on the in the country, and this is why uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and YouTube and Twitter, they see Brazil was the top market for them. So, talking about the Oscars, we knew that the, uh, the, the new audience comes with new challenges, and uh, so we also knew that we had to understand our consumers, especially because this is the trend of linear TV, on T TNT, TNT is the channel who airs the, the Oscars in Brazil. So the trend in the past years was not very good because we had like a peak in 2016, but the audience was going down since then. So we knew that we need to do something. Even digital, and the green line is digital, digital was also the same trend, like went up in, 2000, in 2016. 17 was higher, but dropped in 2018. So, we knew that uh, they were in social, and so we had to build a plan with social, because you believe that, okay, if people talk a lot about content on social, and you do have a powerful content, why you don't bring these people from social to, the, to our TV? So we build a plan, and here, I'm not gonna go one by one, but as, as you can see, we increase a lot of interactions with our consumers in social media in 2019. And these are some examples. We had stories, we, have, we, are, we were everywhere, you know? Stories live on YouTube and, and Twitter, we had uh, a lot of things on Facebook and, and Twitter as well. So we had two strategies. One was bringing people from TV to the social. And here I have, um, I have a, I'm not gonna 
put the audio because it's in Portuguese. We're not going to understand anything. But the idea was we had this spot on, uh, on TV bringing people to YouTube. Okay, we invited them to come to YouTube. And we also had a strategy to bring people from social to TV. So, and had this one I can play because it's the audio is in English. There can be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and you just need one to believe in you and that was him. You can have a hundred people in the room that are watching you and 99 don't believe in you and one does and that was him. There can be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and just one does. I, I probably said this earlier but there can be a hundred people or a thousand people in the room and 9,000 or 999 don't believe in you and and one does and Stella Artois, o brinde às estrelas da noite. Aprecie com moderação. This was the the brand that like partner with us during Oscar in 2019. So, we had a very clear strategy. We increase a lot our presence in digital and we bring in people from digital to to linear TV and from linear TV to digital. These are the results. So we saw a big increase in audience in 2019. So we, are, of course, we were very, very lucky. We didn't know that we would have Bradley Cooper and the Lady Gaga on stage doing that amazing like presentation. But anyway, we saw something that we did not believe that could could happen because our TV uh, audience was going down. But then the, the power of social for us was, was impressive and managed us to increase big time our audience. Just to give more stats, we almost uh, increased 400% our impressions in digital. And we almost double our, our, our audience on TV, linear TV, which is amazing. Okay, so how do we, but with all this content, you know, all this interaction on digital, how can you also bring the same benefit to our clients, which are the brands? So we had Stella Artois. Is, uh, do we have Stella Artois here, no? In Europe? Yes? <laughs> of course. Uh, so Stella Artois was a, a brand. Uh, it's very kind of new in, in, in Brazil, and they, they are very aggressive in, in, in marketing. So they partnered with us for Oscars. So the idea was every spot that had on TV and also in social media, we had the Salatoire signature. You know? So this is what we, we gave it to them in terms of media, uh, digital media. So a lot of inter interactions on, on all many platforms that we had available for, for Oscars in, in Brazil. And the results were amazing during the Oscars. So this is uh, the result. We, we are promoting the hashtags called Nasce Uma Estela. Estela is similar to Estrela. Estrela is star. So very similar to the movie. It was uh, a star was born. Is Estela was born. And this is the peak that they got uh, during the Oscars on social media. But the beauty of it is not just they, they, they had a lot of mentions during the Oscar, but also they had, had some legacy in terms of uh, media or brand sentiment. So this is uh, the sentiment before, during, and after the Oscars. We managed during the Oscar increase the posit positive sentiment and decrease the negative sentiment. And after, we, like, the p negative sentiment remained the same as before, but it increased big time the the positive sentiment afterwards. That's it. Thank you. Obrigada.